What's up, Grace family? Welcome to my YouTube channel, God Good Grace Ministry. Today, this is my second time recording this video. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I, my settings got so screwed up and stuff, so I have to record it all over again. So this was supposed to be up uh, last Monday, but it wasn't. <laughs> but uh, we're going to continue to talk about how to walk in joy. Uh, we already know that joy is, is, a, is a fruit of the spirit, so we can we can continue to be joyful with this and, and withdraw from within us and within that spirit. Um, we looked at uh, joy and suffering, and basically just how to put other people above ourselves when we going through that to help us stay joyful. Remember other people. Uh, and when we going through joy, uh, suffering will take our eyes off of earthly comforts. You know what I'm saying? That take our eyes off of just being pew sitters or just sitting in our luxury home. But it, it causes us to get out there and do something for people. You know, uh, suffering going through for God will <clears throat> uh, weed out superficial uh, believers. You know, there's a lot of people that they say they Christians and they believe and then when when it's time to do when things when suffering hits they fall they 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 they, they fold they just give in and then you know when we going through it will it will strengthen our faith cuz God will show up God will show up while we going through and it also serve as an example to others that when they see how we go through, it emboldened them to go through the same thing. You know, we discussed Paul, that Paul was, uh, he was stoned to presume dead. And, uh, and uh, he called all this light affliction. He was thrown in jail, and yet he continued to look past himself and put others first. And then we looked at joy in serving, how to stay joyful when you're serving others. And one of the keys was to have a motivated heart towards God in the right direction <clears throat> and have a heart to love people and want to help people and we discussed that the best way was to, to influence people was to, was to let the love of Christ shine through you work through you you know we talked about being humble like Jesus we talked about not seeking accolades or seeking awards from other people and yeah, stuff like that. Me and my wife were now going walking this out. You know, not too much me, but my wife. She she's been looking for certain family members just to acknowledge her because they never acknowledge her in in anything. Not in getting a brand new car or getting a job or getting a house. Nothing. They have as long as I've been married to her, they have never ever called her and congratulated her on anything. Nothing. Not even, you know, being confirmed into the ministry of God. They have a passive judgment about it. But I, I told my wife, don't seek awards. That, that will take your joy away. So don't seek go accolades from other people. You know, they don't, they're, they're holding against you. And then, and then just know that serving and, and loving people, it will, it will unify people. It will produce joy in others. And now we're going to go into believing how to maintain your joy while you are believing and standing for God and, and stuff and what we believe has a lot to do with our joy a lot or what we believe has a lot to do with our joy if you believe the wrong things if you believe the wrong thing it could hinder your joy it could hinder you from drawing from the spirit you know so you know, I, I, I had this question what are you, what are you believing what are you believing? Because what you believe has a lot to do it. Do if you don't believe that God is a gracious God, that He's the God of the Old Testament, that He gonna get you and He gonna strike you dead if you think wrong thoughts or you sin, you gotta hurt Him get that in the blood. That's gonna hinder your joy. Cause that's a that's a bondage. That's a yoke of bondage on you. That you 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 have to do these works for God to bless you, and your joy is connected to that. So, you know what I'm saying? And then, what are you rejoicing for? You know what I'm saying? What are you rejoicing for? Do you have any rejoicings? And now you have any, do you have any praise in you? That all that matters. 
all that matters. You know, believing and rejoicing, it, 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 it goes together. And I'm going to look at it like this. You, you need the knowledge of God. Everything else is worthless. Everything else is worthless to knowing Christ. If you don't know Christ and you don't have a relationship with God, then you are believing and you are rejoicing in the wrong thing. You are you are leaning to this world system, this world knowledge. And, and Romans 12, 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what's good and acceptable will of God, perfect will of God. Ephesians 4, 23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Romans uh, Romans 1, 17, I think, talks about the blindness of a heart. It said that we used to be darkened. In, 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 in First Thessalonians, it said we are now, I think it's First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5, says we are now children of the light. We shouldn't have darkness in our lives. We shouldn't have dark way of thinking. We should be happy of this saying. Happy of this saying. First, uh, Second Peter, one two says, "Grace and peace is multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord." But it's hard to say people are not uh, have not does not have grace being multiplied unto them through the knowledge of God. So let's uh, let's get into it. You know, it's still knowledge. You have to know Christ. So when we're believing, it's what you. What are you believing? Do you have the proper knowledge of God? Is the grace and peace being multiplied through the knowledge of God? And once you start getting the proper knowledge of God and the wisdom to, to have the proper application to apply, then God says this. Beware of dogs. Because sorry to say, there are people looking to pervert the knowledge of God on purpose. Their main intent is to take the knowledge of God and twist it. The devil is attacking the name of Jesus. He is attacking prosperity. He is attacking uh, healing. He is attacking unity in, in the church. He's, a, he's attacking the sanctity of marriage between man and woman. He is attacking that. He's attacking the sexuality where a boy could be a boy or a girl and, and a girl could be a boy or they could be uh, something in between. You know, my, 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 my daughter said she had a friend that said she's not a, a, a boy. I don't know what I don't know what it is, but she said call call her they. I'm like, what? See, they perverting the knowledge of God. The knowledge is you are a girl. But this perverted worldly system say no, she's a she she's not a boy or a girl, she's a they. What I, I don't even know how to explain that. I don't even know how to explain that. But Philippians 3, 2 says, Beware of dolls. Beware. Let me, matter of fact, let's read it. Did I, write, did I write it down? I'm studying the book of Acts right now, so I'm in Acts. But let's go to, uh, oops, Philippians. But I said, well, Philippians 3, 2. Let's read it. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concession. And that's basically saying, beware of the Jewish culture, the Judaizers that back in the day, Jesus was saying that these Jewish people, they were trying to put the yoke of circumcision on you. They were trying to put the law on you. So they'll come behind Paul when Paul was speech, preaching grace and preaching the true knowledge of God, these Judaizers will come behind and try to put the yoke upon, undo what he did, and said, no, you have to be circumcised, you have to keep the law, and all that stuff. And, and today, that's legalistic people. Legalistic people. Like, you have to wear skirts. Can't wear makeup. You, uh, uh, you can't wear jewelry. Um... Um, his, uh, you, you, you know, what I'm saying? Uh, if you inconsistent, you got to wait. You know, I, I mean, there's so many 
uh, do don'ts that they can put on instead of letting the power of God work in you. God said, take heed of people trying to put a yoke of man made custom and Jewish practice around your neck. People will bring you under bondage and rob you of your joy if possible. And sometimes they don't even know they're doing it. They don't even know they're doing it. That, that's the bad thing about it. Sometimes people will, uh, you know what I'm saying, will put a, a yoke of bondage on you and, or try to convert the knowledge that you have and not even know it. I had, I had a family member uh, tell me, I, I told them that we got we had got confirmed to be ministers of God, and that we gonna we 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 gonna be going on our first mission trip. And instead of congratulating me, the first thing that came out of the mouth is, "Make sure you teaching the truth." That's that that's a kind of, that's a that's that's a judgment mentality. Make sure you're teaching the truth. What are you trying to say? I'm not teaching the truth. I'm not speaking Jesus Christ, born again. I'm not teaching preaching repentance. I'm not preaching the word of God. I let it roll off my back. I told my wife about it. I like, that was the first thing that came out. Like, come on. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't do nothing but encourage. I might not agree with everything, but I'm not going to let one or two phrases throw me off when the overall message of what somebody's saying is awesome. You know, I had, I had a, a, a somebody say something he was preaching and he said that God allowed these, these things to happen. I don't agree with that. But the overall message, what was spoke, was on point. But I don't agree that God allowed things to happen. I agree that God has given us dominion. He has spoken into our lives the thing that I do, and now it's up to us. God didn't allow Donald Trump to win or lose. We had the power. The people had the power to choose who they want to, you know what I'm saying? So God's not allowing it. God's not allowing bad things to happen. We have the ability to, to, to walk out and have dominion over this world. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so, and, and so let's get back on the beware. I don't want to get off topic, off topic. But we're talking about, you know, how to walk in joy. And, and, and one of it is, what, you, what are you believing? When you, when you believe it, we got to believe the right thing. We got to believe what Jesus said. So Jesus, he said, though, we got to have the proper knowledge. Your grace and peace will be multiplied on you through the knowledge of God. Once you get this knowledge, then God said, okay, now, beware of people trying to pervert that knowledge, trying to get you to walk away from the knowledge that you have of God. And I looked up beware in the Bible, and 26 times I could find the word beware. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, it says, beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets. Now, my definition of false prophet is somebody that knows the truth and purposely perverting it and speaking false. I don't call a false prophet somebody that prophesied and missed the mark. They didn't do it on purpose. They didn't do it maliciously. Now, the result is that is a false prophet. But the, the way the Bible explains false prophet to me is somebody who deliberately knows and goes out and pervert the truth and false and prophesy falsely. That's that's my definition. But that's for me, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to tell you you believe how I'm believing, but I'm just saying to me the way the Bible describes false prophets, they call them dogs, evil workers, sheep and and wool, uh, uh, wolves and sheep clothing. That means they pretend they know. A wolf knows it's a wolf. But it's pretending to be something else. You see what I'm saying? So that's just for me. And, and then if you go on in Matthew chapter 16, verse 6, and chapter 16, verse 11, in Matthew, it says, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Once again, these are religious people, people that got that will put custom on. It said, Beware of them. And leaven is something that's like a yeast or something you could put in. And some bread, you can put it on this side of the bread, but it'll spread throughout the whole thing. So he basically said, beware of these, these, these false teachers, these Pharisees, these religious people that, that claim to be, that have a relationship with God, but they're religion. They're religious. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, were religious people. They didn't have a relationship with God. So they were what? 
they were they were perverting the knowledge of God. And, and you know, so so in other words, the Bible is trying to tell us that we need to be beware of what? Troublemakers. Beware of philosophy and tradition of men that makes the word of God none effect. None effect. How is it no effect? If you don't believe in healing, it won't work for you. See, it's none effect. If you don't believe in prosperity, it don't work for you. If you don't believe that God loves you regardless of what you do, it won't work for you. If you if you believe that God is always a putin sin towards you, then it won't work for you. You are all this great. The grace that God has is your grace is small because you don't have no knowledge. You you don't have no knowledge of God. We all got grace, but my, I have more grace in certain areas because I believe what the God says. I have grace in healing. I have grace in prosperity. I have grace in relationship with God. I know God loves me. When I wake up in the morning before I even start my day, I know God loves me. I have that grace. It frees me up to walk free. And not and I ain't saying free to sin, but free from sin. And being that I'm free from sin, I don't look to sin. But if I mess up, I know God loves me. Just like if I love my kids. And if my son mess up, I love him. He don't have to worry about me ever stop loving him. He is free to, to go and live his life and, and try. And if he miss it, you know, he'll, he'll correct us up and try again. But he don't never have to worry about losing that love. Okay? See, all these traditions and philosophy of men, all these and more are belief killer where your joy is. They're belief killers. How can you believe God if, the, if you have the wrong knowledge of God? And how can your joy be producing when you are, are constantly not receiving from God because you're believing the wrong thing? Like I heard this before. I was told that this person is supposed to be somebody's wife. But this person is still married. But just a month ago, the wife, the God was supposed to bring the wife back, but yet God the one that broke the marriage up. See, all that is, is not the true knowledge of God. God hate divorce and marital separation. And that's in Hosea. Hosea. So why would he break you up? He hates that. He going to do the exact thing that he hates? And then you believe in that he done that, and then you, that's like you believe that I was steal from you, but I will bring it back. That you, you believe that I, will, I, will, I, I did you evil, but I'm going to do you good too. That, 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 that don't make sense. To me, that's a perverted belief. That you believe that God is good and evil. That he would do you bad to teach you something, then turn around and do you good. How can you have joy in that situation? How can you have faith in that situation? Whew. Whew. Worship God in the spirit, rejoicing in Christ, and forgetting your past and reaching ahead to the goal set before us. This is another thing that will help you believe and hold on to your joy. It's forgetting your past. I'm here to tell you right now, brothers and sisters, your past is your past. It is gone. I have a bad past. I had somebody tell me yesterday I shouldn't be teaching because I was inconsistent. That's a passive judgment. Even though it's your opinion, your opinion is judgmental. And then, then that person said, I know your past. What do, what does that have to do with now? So what you know what I did 13 years ago? What does that have to do with me now? In the walk of God, in God in the walk I'm walking out now. So let's look at Paul, because Paul had a past too. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, 14. Brother, I counted not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. 
I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling and Christ Jesus. If Paul can forget his past, we can too. If God can forget his past, he can forget my past too. What if Paul held on to his past? And believe me, there was a lot of people back then probably bringing it back up. Probably tell them, no, I don't truly trust you. How are you going to speak the word of God and you used to kill God's people that did that? How can you do it? So, I, so if Paul could forget it, we can forget it. So I'm here to tell everybody, don't let nobody hold you back because of your past. If they, if, they, if they throwing their past up in your face, then they haven't truly forgiven you. They truly don't know the God that I know that is, is greater than my past. That he's about to get, he's going to get the glory out of it because look where he brought me from. I'm far removed from my past. So was Paul. Paul used to kill Christians and now he wrote uh, half of the New over half the New Testament. That, that Paul and that Saul is a totally different person. Paul is so far removed from Saul. So far removed from Saul. What does his past have to do with what he's doing right now for Christ? Nothing. And I'm going to tell you, we can look at it that Paul, Paul killed God's people with a passion. And, and if we look at, 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 at Galatians 1.23, it says, But they have heard only that he was persecuted in time past, now preaches the faith which he once destroyed. How bad is that past? I think his past is way worse than my past could ever be. He destroyed, he killed and, de and persecuted the church for preaching the faith of God. And then he turned around and joins it. And if he had to hold on to his past, he couldn't continue to do what he could. He wouldn't, we wouldn't have all these books. We wouldn't have Ephesians, Philippians, Galatians, Colossians, and, we, and Hebrews, and Romans. We wouldn't have these books. We wouldn't have uh, 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 the historical acts of acts on the life of Paul and the walk of Paul. We, it would have stopped at him stoning Stephen, and then that's it. That he was there watching him stone Stephen, that was it. So, brothers and sisters, I'm here to let you know, don't let your past condemn you. And don't let when somebody bring your past up in your face, dog. Do what I did. I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not even answering the phone no more. Because if you can't let my past go, then I don't need to talk to you. If you got to throw my past up or, or tell me I, I'm disqualified, we don't need to talk. Because God ain't throwing my past up. And the people that know my past, they see God working in my life. So the only time my past comes, like, man, you are so far removed from your past. And I thank God, God gets the glory. All I did was yield to the word. I yielded to the word and I am now where I am because of the grace of God. Has nothing to do with me. God's word and his power and the knowledge. Then the knowledge that I have of God. Knowledge. Like Paul, our hope is in Christ and this hope helped us to let go of a shameful past and guilt and to start looking forward to what Jesus had will have us to become. How can you become great if you're still stuck on your shameful past? How can you do great things with God when people always say, oh, you shouldn't be doing that right now because I know your past. I can't congratulate you because I know your past. I can't, you, you should, I don't see that calling on your life, but I know your past. And this, and I love this. This is a, Check this saying out. This is the biggest saying. This, I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I don't believe in you and I don't see you, but don't let that stop you from serving God. Come on. Like, who, 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 don't we supposed to encourage and build up our brothers and sisters? How are we believing? How are we treating one another with love? How are we serving others? Build each other up. How are you going to tell somebody something discouraged but say, hey, don't let me stop you? Well, guess what? You not stopping me. Because go, my past has caught, taught me one thing, to never be judgmental of nobody. I thank God that I went through what I went through because that's one thing I don't never do. I don't never judge nobody. You know why? Because so God could, you could be in sin for 20 years not serving God. And the, and, 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 and the very next day, God could save you and dramatically change your life. And you could be out on that corner screaming what God has done for you. You're testifying. You are, you overcome by the word of your testimony. Your testimony gives you the power to talk about what God has done for you. 
And as you grow in the knowledge of God, now you can, not only do you, are you telling your testimony, but now you're talking about what God has shown you to keep you going and growing. So you can start preaching the word of God immediately off of your own testimony and what God has showed you. Don't let nobody tell you you can't speak the word of God. That they that, 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 that judgment, they see that there's only a time, there's a time frame in their mind when you are right, when your punishment is over, when you should be graduated. Oh, boy, I'm telling you, I'm speaking, I'm speaking good here, man. I'm speaking good. I wish I had a, a group of people here so I could say amen, amen. You know what I'm saying? So don't, don't let your past stop you from becoming what God will have you become. That's some time to believe for and to have your joy for. Jesus faithful is not to leave you how he has found you. Your, your past don't anchor you. Jesus do. Ain't, don't we have a great God? That he would take somebody like me with a past like me. He accepted me and took me. But then he's not faithful enough to change me and not leave me in that state. Well, he'd do it for you too. And he'll do it for everybody. God will accept you and take you with, uh, with, with any past you have. He will accept you with open arms. And then he will clean you up if you allow him. The word will clean you up. Don't mind earthly things, for our conversation is from the heavenly realm. For freedom in Christ doesn't mean that we should be selfish or, or satisfy our own desire. It means taking every opportunity to serve with love and joy and to become the best Christ representatives we can be. We can be. See, when we believe in God, we got to take that knowledge and, and spread it out to other people. Let them have that same joy. 1 John chapter 2, 15 through 16, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, in the world is the lust of the flesh, love of the eyes, and pride of life. And, and is not, is, pride of life is not the Father, but of the world. So you notice that joy is not listed in the love for the world. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not, I, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you can't find joy in this world, but it's not, it's not everlasting joy, it's not toe-stopping joy, it's not praise-shouting joy, it's not peace in the middle of the storm joy. See, this message is about joy, and joy when you suffering, joy when you when you serving God, joy when you believe in God, joy when you when you when you just you, you run the race for like joy, unspeakable joy. This is what this is about. What are you believing Christ for? What are you standing on? Your joy is anchored to that. If you believe God won't do things, then you won't be happy for that. You won't be anticipating in Proverbs to talk about full bonding. You'll be expecting things to go wrong. I don't know what chapter, I don't know if it's chapter 14 or chapter 15, but it talks about full bonding. Expecting, having an expectation for something to go wrong. That's a sin. It even says that it's a sin. So I, 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 I pray that you get the proper knowledge of God. That'll help you. That'll help your joy start to flourish, and help you stay in joy. Not only, not, not only do you get the proper knowledge of God, but then you beware of, of people trying to pervert that knowledge. Beware of the of Pharisees. Beware of the leaven. Beware of dog. Beware of evil doers. Beware of people trying to put a yoke of bondage on you. Those, those are all uh, 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 fake killers, and it'll, it'll kill your joy. It'll stop you. It'll stop you your joy. You know what I'm saying? Keep your mind on God at all times. Love, love, love people. Forget your past. Don't let nobody condemn you with your past. God is faithful enough that he will take you how you are and then he will, he will clean you up. He'll clean you up. So I pray y'all had a good time with this. We got one more, which is joy in the Lord. And then we're going to be moving on to something real special that I'm working on. But until next time, Hey, I appreciate y'all hanging out and watching the whole video. Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll catch you next time on God Good Grace Ministry.